Good morning, or good day, whatever time of day it is. This is Earl Raj Purdy, here with your Course in Miracles lesson for today. And your Course in Miracles lesson for today, lesson 66, is My happiness and my function are one. My happiness and my function are one. My happiness and my function are one. And it's a pretty long lesson, so I'm going to move through it pretty fast, and I'm going to do it in a conversational way so that it'll just sound like I'm having a conversation with you and I'll be substituting some of the words uh, with the Course in Miracles definitions of those words to make it easier for you to understand. <clears throat> my happiness and my function are one. You have surely noticed an emphasis throughout our recent lessons on the connection between fulfilling your function and achieving happiness. This is because you do not really see the connection between fulfilling your function and, and achieving happiness. Yet there is more than just a connection between fulfilling your function and achieving happiness. Fulfilling your function and achieving happiness are the same. Their forms are different, but their content is completely one. The ego, or your separated fearful mind, does battle with the Holy Spirit, which is your loving right mind connected to God, on the fundamental question, on the fundamental question of what your function is. So does your ego do constant battle with the Holy Spirit about what your happiness is. It's not a two-way battle. Your ego separate mind attacks, but your Holy Spirit mind of love does not respond. Your Holy Spirit, your higher self, knows what your function is. Your Holy Spirit, the voice for God within you, knows that your function is your happiness. Today we will try to go past this totally meaningless battle and arrive at the truth about your function. We will not engage in senseless arguments about what it is. Uh, we will not become hopelessly involved in defining happiness and determining the means for achieving happiness. We will not indulge the ego by listening to your ego's attacks on truth. We will merely be glad that we can find out what the truth is. Now, our longer practice period today has as its purpose your acceptance of the fact that not only is there a very real connection between the function God gave you and your happiness, but that your function that God gave you and your happiness are actually identical. God gives you only happiness. Therefore, the function your Creator gave you must be happiness. Even if it appears to be different to your function, the function that your Creator gave you must be happiness. Today's exercises are an attempt to go beyond these differences in appearance and recognize a common content where a common content exists in truth. Begin the 10 to 15 minute practice period by reviewing these thoughts. God gives me only happiness. God has given my function to me. Therefore, my function must be happiness. God gives me only happiness. God has given my function to me. Therefore, my function must be happiness. Try to see the logic in this sequence. Even if you don't yet accept the conclusion, it is only if the first two thoughts are wrong that the conclusion could be false, that God gives you only happiness and that God has given your function to you. Let us then think about the premises for a while as we are practicing. The first premise is that God gives you only happiness. This could be false, of course, but in order to be false, it is necessary to define God as something God isn't. God, which is love, cannot give evil, and what is not happiness is evil. Um, God cannot give what God does not have, and God cannot have what God is not. Unless God gives you only happiness, God must be evil. And it is this definition of God as evil you are believing if you do not accept the first premise that God gives only happiness. The second premise is that God has given you your function. We have seen that there are only two parts, two parts to your mind. One part is ruled by the ego, which is the part of your mind that thinks it's separate and is made up of illusions and false ideas. The, the other part of your mind is the home of the Holy Spirit, which is the voice for God, the mind for God in you, where truth abides. There are no other guides but these, ego or the Holy Spirit, love or fear, to choose between, and no other outcomes possible as a result of your choice but the fear that the ego-separated mind always engenders and the love that the Holy Spirit always offers to replace the ego-fearful mind. Thus, it must be that your function, your function is established by God through God's voice, or your function is made by the ego-fearful part of your mind, which you have made to replace God. Now, which is true? Unless God gave you your function, unless God gave your function to you, then your function must be the gift of the ego, which is fear. But does your ego, fearful, separated mind really have gifts to give, being itself an illusion of false idea, and offering only the illusion of gifts? Think about this during the longer practice period today. Think also about the many forms the illusion of your function has taken in your mind. Think about the many ways in which you tried to find happiness under your ego's guidance. Did you find happiness under your past learning's guidance? 
Were you happy? Did your egos guide us? Did it bring you peace? We need great honesty today. Remember the outcomes fairly and consider also whether it was ever reasonable to expect happiness from anything your ego fearful part of your mind ever proposed. Yet the ego fearful part of the mind is the only alternative to the Holy Spirit's voice which is the loving voice in your mind. You, in other words, you will listen to madness or you will hear the truth. Try to make this choice as you think about the premises on which our conclusion rests. We can share in this conclusion, but in no other. For God himself shares it with us. Today's idea, my happiness and my function are one, is another giant stride in the perception of the same as the same and the different as different. On one side stands all illusions, all truth stands on the other. Let us try today to realize that only the truth is true. In the shorter practice periods, which would be most helpful today if undertaken twice an hour, this form of the application is suggested. My happiness and my function are one because God has given me both. My happiness and my function are one because God has given me both. My happiness and my function are one because God has given me both. You say it again. My happiness and my function are one because God has given me both. My happiness and my function are one because God has given me both. It will not take more than a minute and probably less to repeat these ideas and these words slowly and think about these words for a little while as you say them. My happiness and my function are one. 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 Your happiness and your function are the same. 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 My happiness and my function are one. Because God has given me both. My happiness and my function are one. Because God has given me both. My happiness and my function are one. Because God has given me both. So pass these videos on to friends that you feel like would benefit from them. And uh, check out my website, earlpurdy.com. And you can sign up for these emailed videos of the workbook lesson from the Course in Miracles. So anyway, let peace extend from my mind to yours.